I think this is the first school where really there's no academic pressure uh, because each student is going at the uh, speed that is right for him and um, they do examinations only when they're completely ready for it. So there is no feeling of fear or academic pressure uh, for the student. Of course, closer to the exam age, they have a set need for the exam, which they work on. But otherwise, the program is largely self-learning, where the students work on their own and teachers assist them whenever required. You have a textbook and you go to the teacher whenever you need help. So, and I really like that. I get more time to study at my own pace, which I appreciate. So it's, it's not too, a lot of stress, so I get to study peacefully. We also found books that are quite easy to work with for the students themselves so that they can learn on their own, they're not dependent on the teacher. Obviously, in case they have any difficulty, the teachers are always there to help them. But uh, just to enable them to work through problems on their own, uh, reading through passages on their own, it's a... One, it's not time dependent then because all the students and teachers don't have to come together at the same time. You could be working on it any time that you want. There are no particular rules which you have to follow. It's nothing like at 8 o'clock you have to do science. What type of it is, you have to do it. But in Shibumi, I think if I want to sing, they'll let me sing. If I want to do math, they'll do, let me do math. If I don't what, they do. It's something like that which I really like. There are no uh, set uh, conditions and rules and uh, patterns. No set, you know, as a, as one says, uh, get up in the morning, do your prayers, do this, do that. There, there are no uh, rules for life like that. It's nothing like a class-wise, a teacher standing with a chalk and a blackboard. It's something where the teacher goes to them and do what they like, explain to each and every kid what you're doing, what explaining. So it's mainly because the fewer people in school, so we can put attention in each and every kid, which I think is a good part of Shibumi. Use citric acid for a weak acid, use NaOH or ammonia for strong alkali, and use calcium. Is it ammonia or weak alkali? No, go check. You made that mistake in your notes also. Yeah. What I noticed that it's nice one to one. You know, there's such a difference when you have a class and you are working with them and you are working with a single child. It's very nice. So, that's what I'm doing. He's sometimes white and he's sometimes not. When is he not white? So the timetable making at Shibumi is one elaborate process because everyone says, you see the children and you see what their needs are and then there are the adults and what they can do. And it takes really long to try to construct. So we don't have a timetable for a class at Shibumi. Each child has a timetable. That creates the time for us to have like one-on-one -on -one with some students. Because maybe when I'm having psychology one-on-one, -on -one, all my little babies are with Sharad and he's doing storytelling with them or something like that. So all of us kind of take care of each other and help it happen. And if it makes it, if you have a physical stimuli in the absence of a cognitive feeling around you, then it's like you were injected with that injection. So I feel like normal schooling, it gives too much pressure on the academics and it's, there's a disconnect between what you do and what you're studying. Like you don't know why you're studying what you're studying. And 
effortlessly psychology lends itself to talking about what's happening in your day and I feel it's really important to have that non-division between this is my academic thing and this is what I am otherwise to just like see how your subjects can relate to your life so seamlessly that feels really nice one thing I think I try extra hard for this to happen in psychology is because psychology when it's like as a study it takes the sense of self as a given. So it says, okay, there is this person, Tanu, and she feels angry, and then it studies why anger. But I think with, with Krishnamurti, he studies why the sense of self. So it's really interesting to bring it together. So you don't just assume that there is this sense of self and many things happen from here, but you're questioning that sense of self, like your, all your conditioning, all your past that you're holding on to. At Shibumi, we're questioning all that. So I think it gives me a great opportunity to kind of connect it. So if I'm doing a study on obedience, it's a great opportunity for me to talk to Khyati, my student, about like, do you feel like you're just obeying the teachers at school without questioning them? And although we're talking about Hitler and the Germans and all, we can, it's so easy to bring yourself into the whole thing. Or she often will ask me, like, Tandi, do you still feel like you're obeying somebody, although you're much older? And it does come, yeah, like you don't obey, but society is created in such a way that you tend to obey society's rules, you know, not one person. But yeah, so my psychology classes go between like the actual study to talking about how it is. And there are days when something triggers off and she's just telling me a whole story which has nothing to do with our class. But some often I have to make sure that doesn't happen as well. Like I can't just let that happen all the time. And so that happens outside class, that happens in class. But you allow that to happen. Of course. For example, if I take math, I'm not a person who enjoys a lot of math. But when I'm getting interested, I'm really keen on working on it. And Kabir uncle, my math teacher, he keeps helping me with it. Even the students over here who are good at math, they also help me. So they sort of engage me a lot, which makes me do a lot more of it. And I think I've learned a lot from here compared to other schools because I won't be knowing the basics and they'll teach me something else and I'll be like, oh my god, what is this? But here I'm understanding each and everything I'm doing. Very often what happens in school is um, the student is not ready for a particular topic. He has not thought about it and the teacher introduces the topic. So many students, they get into the habit of just trying to absorb information. They're not thinking about it. But here, because there is that uh, space for self-learning, when they come to discuss with you, they have thought about it. Maybe they have thought wrongly about it. Hmm? But at least they have given some energy to think about it. So when you talk, immediately the brain is able to uh, get a feel of it. It works beautifully. It works beautifully and it works very naturally. We see it happening with him also. We don't really have to teach, teach. A child just wants to know and they wants learn. to learn. Exactly. They just pick it up. They learn so much more without having been taught. And once you start teaching them, there is a natural tendency to start not liking it. But if they are learning if they on their own, it just happens very naturally. Right. So, uh, it, as I said, it, it didn't feel different. It seems so natural the way it's happening. I do feel like sometimes I feel okay, I feel concerned that this child isn't picking up mathematics, but I don't feel it in comparison to other children. Like I feel it for that child sometimes. And then I might call the parent and say, why don't you work a little bit more at home? And I'll also work a little bit more in school with the child. But it doesn't come in with comparison with an other person. We have this one child who, um, who would come under, say, the autistic syndrome, which I didn't know earlier. And uh, so he was with me. And I remember going on a walk with him one day. And I was, you know, in a rush to take the children to some place, like the post office. And I was holding his hand, I'm like, come, 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 let's go fast, come, come. And he had the stick in his hand, and there are like all these metal uh, rods. And he's just, tang, tang, tang. And he was just like hitting the stick on every metal and listening to the sound. 
and i looked at him and i'm like what am i doing why am i rushing this child from here to there and he's in the moment he's just like <laughs> and yeah i feel like i've learned a lot from that and and i used to go to a conventional school normal school but for me i wasn't that comfortable there because i'm someone who's interested in music but what they expected was academics and things like that if you have like a particular interest the teachers will see that you get uh, times with like experts say you you're interested in music the teachers will see that you get time with someone who is good with music so you get to stay with them for a while uh, an exam learning program could only be say uh, maybe 2 years and then the child is quite ready to do the exam all the time before that is could be really spent on learning so the skills like mathematics science geography history not all skills may be required to be studied from texts and you know uh, to sort of memorize the knowledge and then because the memor- memorizing is also for pr- reproducing it for an exam so we tried to find a lot of uh, uh, material that focuses on the basic skills and we start work with the basic skills often you see stones sort of stacked on each other and it's just there like you know some child has sat and done it but you don't know when or they didn't come around showing it to people saying see what i did see what i did mm. but there when you look around in school there are you get a feeling that a lot of time is being spent engaging with something and i yeah, i would call that art saraswati mana bhajare pradham ad shiva shakti nada parami has been very good has been quite phenomenal because the students really don't depend on the teacher and they're quite confident of the their skills when they go into exam because we don't insist that they take the exam at a particular age we say the student takes the exam and they're ready for it so at about 15 we start preparing them for the exam they take it by the age of 16 or 17 sometimes but only when they're completely ready only when they feel completely ready and therefore there is no a uh, question of stress at all whether the child is uh, what he or she considers herself to be academically inclined or not i feel all our students have done quite well at the exams if they stay on in the school for a longer time i think they will begin to understand uh, that the world is very complex and they have to live in this world without getting absorbed by it so our dialogues with the students are meant to help them understand what it is to live in the world without getting absorbed by it so if that intelligence if that capacity for uh, examining observing if that is awakened in the student i think then there is a possibility of living in the world without getting caught in it so we have seen a lot of kids um, who have been through a similar kind of schooling and we have seen them graduating and uh, you know picking their own careers and they are quite well settled so that fear is not there in our mind that what would she do will this be good enough for this competitive world and all that isn't there um, sometimes we do get a little bit concerned about the academic part okay there are times where i did get uh, concerned about it but then i later realized that there's no sense of pressure to put on to the child at that moment that not really required that doesn't work so it's been like a learning for us also in that term sometimes we feel uh, we get pressurized or we think about the other aspects the academic aspects but then we do realize that that's not that much of a concern you know a child when they are free to learn and open to learn they will pick it up there's nothing difficult about it or not impossible about it. i mean i studied in a school which was um, similar which talked of non competition i have friends who are stock brokers who are working in for software companies who are working for uh, who are artists who are filmmakers and of course those of us who decided to come back and say we want to start a school but it sort of just gives you the kind of confidence to be able to say look this is what i think i'm good at this is what i want to do but not in the way of um, fighting the rest of the world i really like wildlife like wild creatures and stuff so 
I might do go into that field, do something, maybe research work or conservation, wildlife conservation. Also, I really like running, so maybe if I might run a bit. <laughs> you mean r running after the the animals? Or <laughs> yeah, maybe running after. <laughs> and you are not worried about the future? Or uh, no, not really. Not worried at all. Like studying all the heavy things from... Do you feel the some pressure from parents, society or... What, how do you see all this? Because you get a movement of all the society going in one direction, like get business, uh, work, and company, or study, or no? very fixed. How do you see that movement? I I see it. I see that it is happening, but I don't feel like I should move in that direction. I feel like it's okay to do something different. So. I, yeah, I don't feel pressurized by the movement at all. And right now I think everything is falling into place, so I don't feel like, oh, I have to study. Well, I love music. I'm a person who's really passionate on music. Equally, I like art and cooking. So I want to go in that way. I want to continue with my music and cooking. I just want to enjoy my life with that. I'm not interested in anymore. I can take music classes for children when I grow up. That's what my music teacher does. He's, well, he's someone which I really admire a lot. And he's an amazing singer. He's like one of the top most singers in India. But he has a very simple life. And his happiness is teaching children the music which he knows. And that's what even I like to do. I don't want to go to any higher level of music. That really doesn't make sense. As long as you enjoy your music, I think that's enough. Bye.